Now, there is a law in the spirit I want to introduce to you now. This law was honored even by Jesus. It's called the law of substitution. The law of substitution. That means that there can never be a void at any given time. When there's no darkness, there is light. There can never be a time where there is neither darkness or light. If it's not morning, it's night. Are we together? Are, are we together now? Yes. The law of substitution. So, the law of substitution says that with respect to this now, watch this now that you cannot stop outcomes by stopping them you stop outcomes by replacing what should be are we together now it's it's you are substituting evil for good not stopping the entire process the concept of altars was so designed that at no point in your life should there be any void that means if there is no personal altar set up by you the altar before becomes your status quo. Are you getting the point now? You don't have to consciously set up a negative altar. If you do not rise up to define your possibility, any altar available can hurt you and harm you. For instance, you don't need to plant weed. No, the seeds are scattered everywhere. All it takes is for rain to fall and you begin to see weeds grow in your farm. Are we together now? But there is a way that you can see certain farms and gardens manicured. It looks like weeds never come up. It's not true. The potential for weeds are there. It's only that the gardener has taken responsibility to do something upon that farmland every day. So in your experience, you never find weed there. But it does not mean weed cannot grow. Are we together? If at any point the gardener is careless and leaves the farm, then you find out that weeds grow. So you can discover a garden that for one year you never see it bushy and based on your experience you believe that weeds don't grow weeds can grow anywhere but the gardener if he's not putting insecticides he's mowing the grass he's doing something there is an action that is being engaged to keep that garden that way it's called the law of substitution now please look at me most believers and and i i i, I say this with humble submission humble submission humble submission most believers have been taught to tear down altars and then not have any altar around their life again so whether by prayer by breaking of curses generational curses whatever it is and so they say in the name of jesus i am free and then sometimes we men of god sincerely after praying for the person the person falls rolls on the ground and then he stands up and he says that's it you are done go you are free um you are right but you are wrong do you know why because according to the law of substitution there must be a voice speaking an altar must be speaking at every given time if it is not the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus it is the law of sin and death there is no such thing as void where nothing is happening, neither good nor bad, it does not exist. Maybe just in the mind of the individual. Who is learning so far? I'm saying this because there is a responsibility component to administering liberty that if the saints are not taught, they will remain defeated. It doesn't matter the kind of deliverance that is conducted. It doesn't matter the breaking of yokes and curses and whatever it is. Refer to my message, Complete Deliverance. I teach you there that there are three levels of deliverance. Number one, casting out the spirit influences. And then number two, there is what we call deliverance through transformation. The ministry of light. Transforming you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then the final phase is called the discipline of conformity. Where you have to now use your will, empowered by the grace of God, to walk in keeping with the factors that keep those spirits at bay. Show me anyone who practices these three things. You will experience complete deliverance. For most people, their focus is the first area. 
man of God, pray for me. I have bad dreams. Or I have all kinds of patterns. Please help me. And truly, you pray for the person, cast out that spirit, and then the person is free. And the person returns back. You know why the demons are not afraid? Because they know that there are two other steps that were ignored. Deliverance through transformation, the discipline of conformity. So after praying for that person, if you're a man of God here, learn this. When you minister to someone and is free from demonic spirit, you don't just tell him, okay, that's all. Whether you are serious with God or not, whether you are serious with church, just go. He will experience momentary testimonies. By the next week, he will return back and say, you are such a powerful man of God. You prayed for me that week. I experienced promotion. But the spirit still have a legal access to return because the programming in his mind Remember my teaching that your mindset is your contribution to your own failure or your own success. Your mindset that has not been renewed can partner with those spirits and attract them back again.